Hello, my name is Chris Talton, and I'm the pastor of Danville Community Baptist Church in Rawlings, Maryland. I'm coming to you tonight from my home office. Due to COVID spiking in our area, our church chose to end our in-person services and return to meeting only online until the virus numbers start going back down in our area. This past Sunday morning was the first Sunday of our second experience with virtual church. We normally also gather for Bible study on Wednesday nights together. Since we will not be doing that, and since COVID has forced all churches to be more creative in reaching their people, I want to do a little th things a little bit differently. Rather than doing one longer Bible study on Wednesday nights, I'm going to do several shorter Bible studies and post them over the next several days. This week is the first week of our experiment. Much of what we do at DCBC is an experiment. This week will focus on Jesus' millennial kingdom, his 1,000 year reign on earth. We covered much of this topic this past Sunday morning. If you missed it, the post should be right below this one on our page. There is still much to say, even though we talked a lot about it Sunday morning. Let me begin by reading Revelation chapter 20, verses 1 through 4. Then I saw an angel coming down from heaven, having the key to the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. He laid hold of the dragon, the servant of old, who is the devil and Satan, and bound him for a thousand years. And he cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal on him so that he could deceive the nations no more. And I saw thrones and they sat on them and judgment was committed to them. And they lived and reigned with Christ for 1,000 years. Think about the day that Jesus ascends to his earthly throne. Great fanfare will signal the king's arrival and the installment of his officials. If anyone but Jesus was taking the throne, the excitement that they feel would be tempered by the huge task that lies before this newly formed government. As Jesus and his officials look out over the earth that is once again under his sole authority, they will behold the ugliness that was left behind by the former administration, namely Satan, the Antichrist, the false prophet, and their followers. At my church, we have just completed our study of the tribulation and the horrendous destruction that it will bring on planet earth. Imagine the scene after it is over. The planet is in shambles due to thousands of years of human mismanagement, seven years of evil rule by the Antichrist, the effects of Satan's wrath and the de demonic attack that he leads, coupled with four series of judgments by God during the tribulation. The air is polluted beyond repair. Earth's oceans are dead. There is no food or drinkable water. Breathing requires great effort. It's cold. The light of the sun can barely make it through the dense layers of ash and dust caused by volcanic eruption, celestial impact, and nuclear blasts. Decaying bodies litter the landscape. The stench is overwhelming. Fire has incinerated all the vegetation. The ground is irradiated, so even if you could get something to grow, it would be deadly. It is truly an apocalyptic scene. This is the kingdom that Jesus inherits. Jesus' new leadership team will have the arduous task of straightening out the fiasco handed to them by the previous administration. There will be much that needs straightening. After Lucifer's defeat at the Battle of Armageddon, I can imagine him being led off by the angel to the bottomless pit. And one last snipe, he calls out over his shoulder, good luck, you're going to need it. If it was anyone but Jesus taking over the planet, the scenario would be a hopeless one. Most rulers would already be writing the speech explaining why their tenure was unsu unsuccessful. They simply were handed too much of a mess to be able to accomplish anything of significance. But this is Jesus. His level of experience taking impossible situations and bringing hope to them is rich. After all, he was dead. There is no more hopeless situation than that. Since this is Jesus, he could simply speak the word and restore the world to its original glory. He will not. 
once Jesus establishes his leadership team, he will task his followers with the decontamination and reconstruction of his kingdom. The Bible describes the process in Ezekiel 39. We will look at it in greater detail tomorrow night. For now, let me just summarize it. For the first seven months of the new kingdom, people will scour Israel searching for dead and decaying bodies. A follow-up team will locate any remaining contamination and place a flag there so that the recovery teams can gather them and bury them. The purpose is not to honor the fallen dead, but to cleanse the land of their bodies. The survivors will fuel their houses for seven years by burning the useless, discarded weapons of their enemies. It is not fun cleaning up someone else's mess. What parent or teacher, when asking a child to clean, has not heard these words? But I didn't make the mess. So why doesn't Jesus just work a miracle and sanitize and beautify everything immediately? To answer that question, let me ask another. If a teen gets a car, which one does the teen value more? The beautiful new one that daddy bought for her or the used one that she had to pay for with the money that she earned through her hard work? Which one was she take better care of? The used one. Why? That is the one that cost her something. She invested in it. We humans ravage God's first creation, the one he gave us. Next time, we will have to work for it. It will be humanity's chance to show that we have changed. God knows that we tend to devalue those things that we are handed without cost. I've already described what the planet will look like after the tribulation. It looks dead. If you've ever seen the landscape after a forest fire or after a volcanic eruption, think Mount St. Helens, then you know what it's like to doubt whether or not there's a potential for recovery. But God is life, and this is his world. Consequently, Ezekiel speaks of a beautiful, luscious world rising out of the ashes. Easily accessible fruit trees will produce all year long. Water that is fresh and free of pollutants will be teeming with life, even in places like the Dead Sea, where that water was once barren. In the beginning, God brought order out of chaos at the creation. He commanded and life obeyed. He will do it again. The restoration of the earth will happen. It will take time. It will take work. But with God's enablement and man's unquestioning obedience, it will happen. Now, if Jesus can restore the planet that was wrecked by Satan, what do you think you can do with your life or the life of someone that you love? It's going to take some work, some cooperation on your part. He will, normally, he will not normally miraculously and instantaneously relieve you of some temptation or heartache in your life. He could, and he does sometimes. But the growth, growth process he normally uses will help to ensure that you will never walk that pathway again. Perhaps you are feeling hopeless right now. Maybe all the struggles that 2020 produced have you think about thinking about giving up on life or giving into temptation. Drug overdoses are spiraling upward as are dep depression, poverty, and hurt. What you are dealing with weighs heavily on you, so heavily that it makes it difficult for you to breathe. I have good news for you. The same God who will cleanse the air and make it sweet for the people to experience after the worst trouble that the earth has ever seen can do the same thing in your life. That is a reality. Don't question it. The question you need to answer is whether you are willing to obey whatever command that God gives in order to make that a reality. That is the only way your life can be restored to the beautiful plan that God has for it. Maybe you've already experienced God's restoration in your life. Can you do something for us? Can you leave a short praise testimony in the comments? It will be an encouragement to others. If you need restoration and want us to pray for you, can you message us? We would love to have a part in your healing. In fact, let's go ahead and pray right now. Dear Jesus, I thank you so much that you can restore any situation. You can bring beauty out of ugliness. You can bring creativity out of barrenness. You can bring hope 
out of hopelessness. And I pray, Father, that there's somebody that's listening right now or somebody that will see this video in the days ahead that is struggling. I will pray that you will restore hope in their life, hope that is found in Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for tuning in. Please share this post with somebody that you think it might be an encouragement to. We'll be back tomorrow about the same time. While you're waiting, check out our website at danvillecommunitybaptistchurch.com. Thanks and have a great evening.